We just returned from the highly anticipated tire event here in Europe, Tire Cologne 2022, which hosted over 12,000 trade visitors from 100 different countries around the world. Absolutely fantastic and inspirational event to be back in person, talking with other manufacturers, other service providers, and to see some of these latest and greatest innovations in person from cutting edge hardware solutions to some great solutions on the software side. It was great to see all this in person. Uh, and we also had a chance to speak with a lot of people in person. You're going to be hearing that today on this podcast, uh, which is, of course, coming up. Much more on this episode of The Auto Tech Show. Hello and welcome everyone to a brand new episode of the Auto Tech Show, our podcast that addresses the trending challenges in automotive industry and spotlights the latest innovations in technology that providers can give to operators around the world. On this episode today, we are talking Tire Cologne 2022, the leading international event for the global tire and wheel industry, which of course happened just a few weeks ago in beautiful Cologne, Germany. During the show, we had the great opportunity to speak with a number of guests to get their highlights and to talk challenges with them in person. You're going to hear all of that in the episode. But before we do, I want to introduce our guests here in the studio. I'm honored to welcome Michael Wilkinson, the head of content NPR here at AnyLine. And to his side, we are introducing Rory Trout, the business development representative here at AnyLine. Both of them were at the show and will be able to give us some great context on what they heard and of course comment on what we hear from these various interviews. Gentlemen, thank you for being with me. Great to have you on the show. Appreciate the time today. Yeah, thanks for having us on, Mark. Glad to be back. Uh, really excited, Mark. Um, excited to share more. Yeah, absolutely. Lots lots to share, lots coming up and uh, some, some interesting comments I think we're going to hear on various interviews. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the interviews from the show. And as I mentioned, you were both there, so you can give us some insights and context on what we hear, maybe provide a little backstory and, and get your impressions as well. So really looking forward to that. So I think the main thing we heard at the show is, of course, the supply chain issues that continue to plague the automotive industry, not just the automotive industry, but we're seeing this across multiple industries. The supply chain is continuing to become an issue uh, and specifically, of course, in the automotive parts and tires. During the show, we spoke to Manuel Felix from Euromize. They're a Portuguese company with an intuitive and mobile B2B portal where customers can place orders for automotive parts and tires. Really cool solution that they have. But here's what Manuel had to say when we asked him about the supply chain issues. Uh, yes, we of course the main problem is the supply chain problem. Uh, it's very difficult at the moment to get what you need, uh, mainly tires, also now spare parts. Right. So we are in the moment where you order, let's say, 100 SKUs and you get uh, 20 or 25, uh, which is a problem. Yeah, so sure. you need to be very careful with your stocks and uh, and the supply chain. Instead of having, a, let's say, a stock for two months, you need to have stock for four months because you never know what will happen in the near future. Yeah, and that's something that we heard from many other companies as well. Uh, supply chain issues are hitting everybody. And uh, as he was saying at the end of there, um, you know, it has knock-on effects in terms of how much stock you actually order, you know, how much stock space you need to have. And obviously, whenever it comes to tires, that's a lot of space. Yeah, absolutely. Rory, any comments from what you heard there? I know that Manuel had mentioned they had placed an order and only received 25% of it, and that's staggering. So your comments on what we just heard, perhaps on what Michael said. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, Manuel had a good point. The parts and tires and the uh, automotive aftermarket, the it's very evident that there's a deficit in, in the supply chain, and I think a lot of companies are looking for a solution to really find a, a way around it and to really maximize their supply that they have already. Yeah, absolutely. Adding to that, you know, really what we've heard even at other events, like whenever you were at Modex uh, a little while ago, Mark, you know, what it comes down to right now is. They really need to, you know, every company needs to try and improve their own traceability, improve the visibility of where their actual, you know, where their things are along the way. And whenever it comes to uh, things like tires, things like parts, you know, there previously hasn't been the same kind of uh, visibility in terms of, you know, tracking where things are, in terms of like recording the serial numbers on the tires, on the parts. Um, and yeah, now we're dealing with the consequences of that um, as the supply chain issues continue. 
And he mentioned there the warehousing problems, people are having to order more ahead of time, perhaps instead of that, just in time inventory, they're having to, of course, stock up. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to the the data management of that, that's going to be an issue that a lot of these guys are facing. They're having to explore their warehouse options. They're having to put things in containers. And if they're not tracking that properly, stuff's going to go missing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think that... Um Something that we're also going to see as something that we might hear a bit more about is, you know, people are looking a lot more towards, you know, tire hoteling services and how you can keep better track of tires in that situation as well. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's a growing problem. Yeah, absolutely. And Roy, I know you're speaking to a lot of people as well in the industry. Is this something that we're seeing grow more and more? We're not seeing any solutions sort of come to market. This is continuing to be a problem. Well, that's true. There are some solutions that are coming about and a lot of end end solutions, but sometimes they're not capturing all the right data in order to really perfect the the process and maybe knowing exactly what to do with the data is also something we're working on and happy to continue working on. That's a great point because collecting it is one thing, but using it in the right way, that's a whole other challenge and a gap that perhaps they uh, operators need to anticipate now, need to be proactive in thinking about. Right. Excellent. So obviously we know the supply chain issues are a thing. One of the other topics that came up uh, during the show was, of course, the digitization of tire data, collecting it. Uh, We know that it's something that continues to be a problem, um, but it's only just starting to pick up traction. And I think we're seeing that more and more. We spoke to Ben Santos. He was representing Neto Inc. all the way from San Diego, California. And he had a really good point here that I think uh, many operators can reflect on. So let's have a listen to what Ben has to say. Yeah, it, it definitely has accelerated that this past two years. You know, the realization that the tire is the last component of the car that's purely yeah. analog. And uh, and ironically, you know, this is the interface between the car and the road, right? There's yeah. lots of information in there. Sure. And so it's, it's difficult, uh, number one, because it's, um, you know, it's a very harsh environment. Uh, you can put sensors in it, but they have to be very robust to withstand yeah. that environment. Yeah. Uh, so that's one of the difficulties. Interesting there. And he's right. It's the last piece that connects the car to the road is the tire. Yet it's been the last piece to be digitized. We've seen a lot in the car become autonomous, uh, digital, every aspect of the car, except that last piece, the piece that connects it to the actual moving of the vehicle. But it is picking up steam, like he said. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a great point that he was making. And, you know, one of the things I actually heard uh, in a talk um, which was a little bit later on in the event, uh, one of the guys was basically saying that for a long time, as you know, as he was referring to, um, you know, digitization has been like almost a dirty word. Or I'm trying to remember exactly what it was because it was in German, but um, yeah, Schimpfwort, uh, <laughs> digitization. Uh, and, and yeah, there has been, uh, you know, for a long time, sort of a reticence. I think it's like, you know, I think we know that the auto industry specifically to do with tires, it hasn't been the quickest in order to digitize. Uh, but we're really seeing the, the des- you know, the real need for it right now. And uh, a lot of interest in people looking towards uh, digitizing the information on tires. Yeah, absolutely. Digitizing the information on the tires is kind of a new concept and we want to make it the new norm. It's bound to happen. And with sensors, like um, Ben suggested, that they're not always robust and picking up the data is not always so dependable. So that's for the most important thing. I'd, the only thing that stays on the tire is that the DOT or the tin and the tire size. And we want to be able to maximize the whole use of this unique number, right? Yeah, absolutely. And and do you think it's been uh, something that's been last to be done because of how difficult that data is to capture traditionally? Like a lot of the, the electronics in the car, I mean, that's just collected information. But that tire is it's a difficult piece. You have that black text, uh, very hard to see even with the naked eye. Is that maybe why it's been the last piece? It's just been the one that a lot of people have gone, we'll get there eventually, we'll figure it out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think that as you say, because it's extremely difficult. But then at the same time, I think that other you know methods which have been looked at, uh, things like putting RFIDs in them, they're certainly a really useful way to collect the data. But at the same time, if you're a shop and you know, you're know you trying to record this information, you know that 
at the current stage, there's only a certain number of um, of OEMs that are actually putting RFIDs into tires. It'll probably be another decade or so um, if they're to catch on before you know you could really rely on that for all the tires that you're going to be dealing with, especially if you're not you know only handling that specific uh, that specific brand. And yeah, I think that, you know, as people look more towards, you know, different varieties, they, you know, shop more online for tires as well, you'll see a greater variety. So, you know, having a single way in which to collect the information from all the tires in a standardized way is something that'll really make the difference, uh, not only for consumers, but also, you know, uh, for garages around the world. Yeah, I think the key word there is the standardized way. And you mentioned it as well, Rory, but that has to become the new standard for uh, consumers to get on board with it for service providers, for the shops in order to be able to do it as agile and as quickly as they need to do it. It has to become a standard. Right. And also for used tires, and we spoke about before with the supply and demand, we need to also maximize the use of used tires and to keep um, not just fleets, but also passengers on the road safe and in good condition tires. Yeah, it all comes down to keeping people safe. And that's the work we've done with Discount Tire, of course, been about keeping people safer on the roads, being able to use that data as quickly and as agile as possible. Yeah, and that's specifically then for, you know, for uh, recall awareness, because mm-hmm. the DOT number, as you know, you know, you can use that to, against the NHTSA database in the US in order to, you know, indicate whenever uh, specific tires have been recalled. Um, and in the Discount Tire example that you give, you know, they'll contact uh, the, comp- um, the customers that they have and just let them know if there was that situation that they could come straight in and, you know, they have everything already recorded uh, in their database. So that's a great use case example. Yeah, it's something that we're going to see more and more uh, providers jump on board with, I think, as well. Now that it's out in the market, it's being used, the technology is there. So back on the topic of digitizing the information, of course, we spoke to Michael Temple from Getty Go on the matter, uh, and he brought up a really interesting point. So let's have a listen to what uh, Michael had to say when we asked him about digitizing the tire industry. Oh, the tire industry is, is still in winter sleep with digitalization, yeah. and uh, I think... Um, they need a lot more experience to take the sensation the, or automation the, the process of selling tires to the customers. Yeah. Yeah. So your solution is a, a, a small, a small piece of yeah. that complete solution. Yeah? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Michael was great. We had a nice conversation, <laughs> and he had some great points here. And digitalization in the tire industry is in hibernation, as we know not just from COVID times, but also improved historically. So we're seeing a lot of new e-mobility solutions, AI around the vehicle, but yeah, who's working on the tires and who's really going to change this focus. So we want to make, yeah, tire data capture, tire size, the new norm. Even if Michael mentioned it's a small piece of the puzzle, it's a very important one where we're, really trying to support the B2C and B2B wholesale markets as well. Yeah, uh, it was great talking uh, with Getty Go. And there was another, uh, there was a couple other uh, companies that were out there. We, we can really see this movement towards um, these different solutions. Um, and yeah, I think it's just something which will definitely, um, which will definitely increase in the next number of years. Uh, providers that are, you know, taking that extra step like Getty Go are doing and just making it that much easier for people to get, to get their tires online, whether it's uh, wholesale or whether it's from a, from a B2C perspective. Yeah, and the online perspective is an interesting point because a lot of consumers perhaps purchase tires online already, um, but by upgrading the solution, upgrading the way to capture data, we're making that easier. Uh, and, that, and the industry in general is moving towards making it easier for people to do that in a very e-commerce world. So they don't have to go down to the dealership. They don't have to call their dealership and say, hey, what tires do I have on my car? We're making that as easy as possible. And that's, again, that small step in the right direction for the industry as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, people still are, you know, rightfully concerned about buying the wrong tires. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's not just actually, you know, consumers, uh, something that, uh, that we spoke to, to Michael about was, you know, sometimes people that are even on the, on the wholesale side, uh, are afraid of getting the, the, the orders wrong as well. And it's very easily done because, you know, a DOT number or the tire size number, you know, anybody can make that mistake because it's, you know, uh, you know, just a list of numbers and characters. Uh, it's, you know, far easier for a robot to read than for a human. And especially if you're doing multiple over a day or over a number of hours, you know, we're all human. So I wasn't surprised to hear that. And uh, yeah, it's it's great to see 
you know, the industry moving towards the direction of digitizing this, this crucial step, as Michael said, it's, it's a small step, but it's an important one. And I think worth bringing up, jumping back to a point you made earlier about suppliers having to buy more right now because of the supply chain issues, it puts even more emphasis and importance on the quality of that data. Because if they're ordering something based on incorrect data, a wrong character, like you mentioned, Michael, I mean, now they're going to stock up on that for much more than they need. And then they got an even bigger problems. So getting that data accurate is kind of the baseline point, especially given the supply chain issues. Right. Yeah. Totally. Great. Okay. So as a final point to uh, recap this uh, event, obviously we have to talk about tire cologne in general, the first big tire event that's happened in person, um, which is great to see, as I mentioned in the opening bit there, great to have all these solutions uh, out on the plate. It sounds like a lot of the vendors brought some great innovations to the show. Uh, there was a lot to see. Uh, and to highlight this point, I'm going to jump to a comment here from Matthias Frulig from ATEC, a partner that, of course, we work closely with when it comes to data capture. Uh, here's what Matthias had to say about tire cologne. I've been to Auto Mechanica last year, and it was it was nice to see the people again, but I didn't see as many as I liked. Yeah. So, so coming in here, knowing COVID is over, but especially international guests, I was a little bit worried, but man, I was impressed. So many nice, familiar faces to see, so many new friends that, that are making. So it, it was a really, really good show for us. It's like everyone was having innovations in their back pockets, and now we're here at the tire, and everyone's bringing them out, demonstrating, showing. It's It's fantastic to be here. So everyone is keeping stuff in their back pocket, like Matthias said. They're an interesting thought because everyone was holding off until they could show it in person, which I think is something relevant for this industry. It's a very hands-on industry. It's not like others where they can do like an online launch. So a lot of companies were holding on to innovation to bring it uh, to a show like this. What was your impression of the show based on what Matthias said and what you guys saw? Of course, you're speaking to a lot of people, Michael, Rory, you're walking around a lot. Uh, what was your impression? Is it kind of close to what Matthias said? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one of the interesting things that we noted when we were going around, like Rory and I, we went over to some of the major, you know, tire uh, providers. We were looking around their booths and we noticed that among the major players, their booths weren't so much about like, here's a hundred different tires that you can look at. We would go in and see... These guys are really now focusing on, you know, their retail solutions, really focusing on their, their, the more online side of their businesses. Um, so that really stood out to us. Even some of them where there'd be not even a tire, just, you know, it's just about networking, understanding, you know, what their, uh, what their latest platforms are all about. Um, so that was, yeah, that was something that was really obvious. And um, yeah, as, as Matthias said, a lot of really interesting innovations and uh, sort of moving more towards providing end-to-end -end, uh, solutions, not just, you know, when people are coming into stores, but, you know, uh, creating a more of a, an omni-channel approach, I would say, towards uh, the way in which they're going to be providing tires. And do you feel like that's the way forward for events like this? Do you think there's going to be a lot less of the, 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 touchy feely hardware type style. We're going to see a lot more of, like you said, going there to see solutions, new innovations. Is that kind of the way forward post pandemic? Yeah, I, th I think that the, there'll probably be a combination of the two because you know, the touchy feely, as you say, at, at the same time, when you go to a big event like this, you know, the, the ones that are really attracting attention will be, you know, the, the company that has, you know, there was one at, at the back actually of our hall and it was just gigantic tractor tires being, you know, being fitted properly. And, you know, there was always a huge crowd around them. Uh, so, you know, the, it's an event. The cool yeah. stuff is always going to attract people over. Um, but at the same time, you know, whenever it really comes down to, whenever it really comes down to business, uh, I definitely think that things are going to be moving more in this digital direction. Um, and people focusing more on what is the value beyond you know, the, the tire itself, what are the additional services, um, as we saw with the, you know, with, with the very big names moving in that direction. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Now, Rory, I know you were speaking to a lot of people before the event, kind of as a build up to get people excited about it as well. Uh, now, based on what you saw and, and who you spoke to and, and from wandering around and walking the floor, uh, what was your impressions on things? Was it kind of what you expected them to be? Was it a little bit different? What was your take? Ooh, that's a good question. I think going up to it, I was really excited to actually demo our solutions in person and to meet people face to face and to really get their personal engagement. And it was a great show for that, being able to show exactly how it works, giving, getting feedback and yeah, working out solutions together. Also walking around with Michael, I noticed a lot of similar 
trends going about the show. And it wasn't so, I think if you're a serious car um, tire fan, you could find some really nice things to do there. However, it seemed like a lot of handshaking, a lot of industry leaders just, you know, keeping up relationships. And I think that's great. And it's really great to be part of it now and to put ourselves into this cool industry. Yeah, absolutely. From those that were attending, what kind of level did we see? Did we see a lot of technicians on the floor, a lot of maybe software side of things, those employees, or were we seeing maybe more of the traditional show attendee, the executives? Uh, from my perspective, it was really a mixed bag. Okay. I mean, as the days went on, I think that, uh, I think that, you know, as often is the case with an event like this, like, uh, you know, we noticed in the first couple of days, a lot more on the exact side as the days went on, um, more, um, more of on the aficionado side. Um, and we're speaking to some guys, even from, you know, just single garages or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and that was great as well, because on the one hand, you know, we're talking to people, uh, and understanding what their operations and what their plans are, you know, for massive companies. But then at the same time, it's great just to get talking with, with some local guys and just understand like, what are the specific pain points that they're dealing with right now? Um, whenever you're, you know, you're working with a far smaller operation and, you know, sometimes they're quite close. Uh, what, you know, what people are dealing with on the ground level could be something which whenever scaled up could have a massive effect on a larger business. Uh, and yeah, it comes down to a lot of these things that we talk about, you know, uh, to do with, you know, accuracy to do with, um, you know, efficiency and, uh, yeah, just being able to offer that bit extra to each of the customers as they come in, because as people are coming more, um, more and more back into stores, um, since the end of COVID, they've been used to buying everything online. They've been <laughs> used to more of an online experience. So being able to combine the two of them, you know, it is a real challenge whenever you're, uh, whenever you're a tire retailer on the smaller side and, you know, on the larger side as well, they want to be offering that bit extra, uh, to, to keep pace with the way in which the, the rest of the retail industry outside of tires is gone, uh, yet where everything has gone super digital, um, they, they understand really well from our discussions that that's the way that they need to be going as well. Yeah. And it sounds like a lot of information collecting from these, uh, right. tire operators to get on board with that retail boat, which is moving at a thousand miles an hour, exponentially changing, uh, on the retail side. Exactly. The yeah. customer's demands have changed, uh, which we know from retail. So yeah, it's really, really nicely said. Rory, any final comments there? I think Michael summed it up pretty good. Agreed. And, yeah. As usual. <laughs> Another check. Nailed it. No, that's perfect. It, it has been an honor having you guys here and to listen to, to what we heard at the show. Just a small sample, of course. But it definitely sounds like tire events are back and back in a different way. Maybe moving towards this hybrid form. But everyone is looking for that next step uh, in a different direction, perhaps, than they were a couple of years ago. So really nice to hear. Uh, and yeah, great to have your guys' context from the event and, and to get your thoughts and insights on what we heard. So thank you for being with me, both of you. And uh, yeah, appreciate the comments. Our pleasure, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Great. And again, a big thank you to uh, those that we spoke to at the event. Thank you for giving us your thoughts and coming by the booth. It was great to speak with you. Um, of course, we look forward to those continued conversations. For all of you watching today, thank you so very much for joining us on this episode. Hopefully, lots for you to take away from what was a great event again in Cologne, Germany at Tire Cologne. And of course, to the organizers of Tire Cologne, uh, thank you so much for hosting a great event. And we'll certainly look forward to seeing you guys all very soon. If you have any questions about what you heard today during this podcast, we'll go ahead and put all the LinkedIn descriptions for all of us uh, in this video. You can reach out to us individually if you have comments or questions, or of course, just comment below and we'll get to those conversations and, and keep it going. Again, we want to make sure that you have all the information you need to make right strategic decisions and we'll help you uh, as best we can in those comments. And I just add, uh, if you'd like to know more about digitizing your tires and integrating that into your process, uh, we have an ebook which came out fairly recently called Smart Tire Retail, which I definitely recommend checking out. Yeah, absolutely. Any of this podcast is powered by any line. If you want to learn more about what any line is doing in the automotive industry, you can head to anyline.com forward slash industries forward slash automotive. You'll find the ebook there. Lots of other great resources to sort of keep you up to date and inform you with some of the latest innovations on the tire side in the automotive. So again, thank you all so very much for joining us for this episode. It's been great to have you. I look forward to seeing you on the very next episode of the Auto Tech Show. Until then, take care, everyone. We'll talk to you soon.